Nancy L.T. Hamilton here again. So we are going to be doing a split shank ring using 12 gauge square throwing silver wire, which is 2.053 millimeters. It says it right there. <laughs> so I have charts online. I also have a formula, a whole bunch of different things for ring sizing. So you should check it out. Once again, we have to do math. Uh, I might note that you can find your ring, how much material to cut by measuring the internal diameter of your ring. So check out the internal, internal diameter page also. All right, as I said, 12 gauge, you could do this with 10. I don't know about 14, but possibly. So first thing I need to do is figure this out. So. My internal diameter for an eight and a half ring is 18.4 millimeters. I'm adding to that my metal thickness of 12 gauge is 2.053. And then I'm timesing it by a rounded up version of pi, which is 3.14 forever. Um, so we're doing it to 3.15. If you're new at this and you've got a lot of finishing to, redo, to do on your ends, you might want to do this by 3.50. So we'll see. I mean, it's always a crapshoot <laughs> the first time. So once you do it, you say, oh, that didn't work, so I need to do this. And then you write down your directions in your little book so you remember for the next time because we don't always do the same thing all the time. Some of us don't. Some of us do. So 64.43 is my number. I'm just going to throw that up to 65 millimeters. The second thing we have to do is straighten this wire out. I'm not going to talk while hammering. I hope. You never know. Still has a bow in it. The heck is rattling. Couldn't be any of the 3,000 things that are on my desk. Getting there. Have to do a little hand straightening here. Good enough for now. We're going to be squishing this up. So before I cut and measure, I'm going to clean up my edges with the miter cutting vise. If you don't have one, get one, frankly. I know people live without them, but my question is why? So this needs to be tight up against there with no light coming in. What's the back look like? Looking the good. Okay, no gaps. So we're good to go on this. Nope. What the heck keeps happening here? Why is it moving like that? That usually means it's uneven. The wire is uneven. So I'm gonna move it up. Actually, I'm going to change all of this around. I'm going to clip this end off. Start fresh using the flush end of the flush cutters. Make sure yours can handle this gauge of metal. These are, what did we figure out? Up to 10 gauge, I think it was. Don't hold me to that. Okay. No gap. No gap. Makes my teeth hurt. Okay, I think I've reached my limit on that. So I'm going to drag on some sandpaper to take off any burrs on the edges. Okay, so this is ready to go on this end, so I can go ahead and mark. 65 on here, and I'm going to do two pieces at 65. 65, and I'm going to clip it. I'm going to clip it outside this line with the flush end up there because I have to put it in the vise. 
as well prep this side while I'm at it. So wedge shape on there I'm going to clip off using the flush end after I pick the cutters up off the floor to our second piece after I clean this end up in the vise. So I'm going to do that again and uh, get both these ends ready, trim them to size, and try to straighten them a little more because you can see they're still, they're still a little bowed. Okay, so these are lined up and the ends are finished on this one. And notice that I didn't make my mark right out the line. I'm making a little above because it's going in the vise. So if you're off by hair, you can line these two up back here. Use a flat surface like this. Make sure they're nice and level. Put your pieces both together in the miter cutting vise. Tighten down and hopefully they won't move. And don't file this way because especially with square wire which has a slight lip on it, it's going to want to move that way. All right, now they're all even. I'm just going to go ahead and sand while I'm here. This is 400. So hopefully we have a match set. Don't forget to take off your burrs. Try to keep this as flat as possible when sanding because you don't want to round your nice square edges. All right, here's my two little guys. They are as close as humanly possible for me and uh, they should be around 65, 64 and a half, 64 and a half. Let's see this one, 64 and a half. So I'm, I'm happy. So now we're gonna, ugh, now I'm gonna go 32 and a quarter. That'll be fun because I want to mark halfway. All right, 32. Oof, and a quarter. And I'm just going to transfer by laying these two together. Okay, so when I go over the soldering area, I am only going to put a tiny bit of flux on the inside of this. And I think I'm not going to do any more than five millimeters of soldering. I put the... Um, two and a half there so I know I put two and a half on the line zero so hopefully these are in the right place okay so the solder is going to run from this side to this side only I hope <laughs> all right with any luck I will do this correctly I'm only going to put flux here only gonna put flux here. I'm gonna put these little puppies together. Whew. Okay, loud noise. A little warming. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a piece of solder. Alright, I wanted to cross both those seams. wanted it to but it looks okay I think we can work with this I'm gonna open this with a screwdriver hoping I'm not gonna trash it completely because it's all scritchy I'm just gonna Y those prongs just push a little that way and a little that way and I can actually measure this distance to make sure it's the same. So from outer edge to outer edge, it's 10 there. And this is not a, a little short here. Okay, a little more this way. 
There we go. Okay, so that's pretty good. Uh, I need to clean this little glob of solder up here before I go on to the next step. So I'm gonna... Just going to take a sanding dash disc. This is a coarse sanding disc. Kind of trying to also make the join between these two pieces invisible. Zoom in for a quick show and tell. It's gone. But oh wait, there's one and some weird red thing on the back side. Surprising. So I'm gonna fix this side too. You, know, you spend so much time finishing and you don't realize how much time you spend finishing while you're in the middle of the piece, not to mention when you're done and doing a final polish. I spent a lot of time on finishing. Might as well learn how to do it. Uh -huh. See, I'm taking these little tiny back and forth strokes with the wheel. Okay, we're getting there. I'm just going to keep working up the grit. And hopefully soon this will be finished. Or at least that part of it finished. Okay. This is uh, cleaned up as I'm going to do it for right now. We got that seam blended. I've signed, dated, numbered, and hallmarked this. So it's pretty much done too. So now I'm going to go bang it around a mandrel and turn it into a ring. So now I've committed to which side is the inside, and I need to stick with that. <laughs> I'm going to start bending my ends down just like you would with a normal band. Do this side. Doing it about eight, a little smaller at this point. These bail forming pliers come in handy. And I can always anneal this. To make my life less challenged. <laughs> I need to get these in every size they make. So we're getting close. Hard to try it out with two other rings on. Yeah, a little tighter, and we should be good to go on that. Looking pretty good. These rings I just did in two videos ago. If you want to learn how to make these wrapped rings, stackable wrapped rings yet. Okay, so I want these to line up for sure. Let's see how I can do that. Okay, now which way did I have it? That's the wide end, right? Yes, yeah, so now I need to put it this way. See how that thumb is trying to stay out of the way and rotating this shank. And I'm going to keep staying up here. Even though this is an eight and a half, I want it smaller so there's some space for the ring to move. Maybe even a little tinier. Let's flip it. It's looking more round. Oh god, I forgot again. Now, if there is a benefit to being senile, I hopefully will find it soon. <laughs> so far, I've yet to find the benefit. I haven't gotten this so bad that I wake up each morning and go, Oh, where am I? I mean, that could be an adventure because you think you're traveling all the time. I don't know. Or disconcerting as hell, which I think it probably really is. All right. I think it's time to anneal. Right in there. Okay. I'm going to go anneal it and then come back and slap on it some more. So what I'm going to do here with this smaller... Um, bail making pliers is try to finagle these two ends a little tighter together and I'm also putting additional tension on it kind of treating it like a jump ring and then I'm pulling it out and past where uh, they meet say I'm hammering and it's just past the end so that'll hopefully add some tension onto it to make it a tight fit. I'm squeezing them back into the middle again and taking care of these high spots. Hopefully they're going to pop down 
snap into place against the other side. Getting there, that one looks pretty good. Now just finessing the other one down. And now we're ready to bring it in to the soldering area. All right, now I'm spraying uh, flux on the piece, warming up the flux so that hopefully the solder doesn't roll off or get shot off. I'm using pick soldering here. And put a little piece of hard solder over each seam. Now I'm applying heat to the join. Getting that solder to flow, and I had a little problem. It only flowed on one side there, which probably means that there was just a little bit too much of a gap, but I am going to try to force it in there with the pick. And then finally I gave up and put another third pallion of solder on top. Uh, now I'm heating from the bottom to draw that solder from the top down through the back side of the ring shank. And uh, that's pretty much it pretty exciting. Off to the pickle. All right, now I'm giving it the Nancy eye. <laughs> Decided it needs to be re-rounded because remember we kind of crushed that top. So back on the mandrel with the mallet, flipping it so that it stays even on both sides. And going all the way around to make sure it's fully round. Now I'm checking it out again, and it looks like I think it's okay because I'm trying it on. <laughs> this is always the exciting part because you know you're almost done. All right, back to finishing. Woohoo! So after all that soldering and hammering, there's little gloved solder that need to be moved down. We need to blend any seams so that they're beautiful. If you see a lot of seam, you need to go add more solder using a really rough grit, like 220, and then moving up 324 and all that. Don't forget the sides. You want to have a complete polish. And I think I've switched disks here to a fine one, and now I'm onto a silicone wheel, or barrel in this case. Smoothing everything out and putting on a pretty good shine. I'm not going for a full, full mirror finish. Kind of a matte shiny. So with your ring, you can put a bezel on top and solder it to the two prongs that way or in this direction if you wanted. You could also uh, put it inside of the shanks. The one thing, especially with these pre-made crappy ones that are tiny little walls, um, you want to make sure that you've got enough material sticking up that you can actually set the stone from where it is. Uh, you don't have to even do a bezel. You could do a, a setting soldered in here, like a basket setting. I don't have any at hand right now, so I can't really demonstrate. If if you want to open this up more, you could certainly take pliers and do it. Uh, I think that it's better overall to try to find a wedge shape because then it'll open evenly. And something like the back of this little mallet could totally work for opening it up. You also want to remember after you've done your damage to this thing that you go ahead and clean the interior edges up on this also. They should be as pretty as the rest of it. So whatever you do with this is up to you as usual. Thanks for coming. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and whatever else we ask you to do all the time that you're so bored with. Your support is appreciated, and um, don't forget to check out my store, nancylthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelthelt
So thanks again, guys. Ciao.